I've just made a deal that will keep the Empire in here forever. Welcome to a very special episode of Blossom, in which we'll have a look at the contents of this package sent by Laser Pants, curator of the 3POA YouTube channel. Link in the description. Now, regular viewers are aware that I've been dabbling in collecting Star Wars Black Series 112 scale action figures, and I'm playing this uh, safe little game of uh, how low can you go, trying to find them well below retail price. And uh, with the exception of two in the collection, one of which is not here yet, uh, that's exactly what I've done. Um, you know, no illusions of attempting to collect them all, because that would be utterly impossible. There are hundreds of Star Wars uh, Black Series figures. Um, but a pick-and-choose game, uh, particularly among the, uh, the peg warmers that are easily found below retail price. Uh, very fun game. Um, now, uh, regular viewers are also aware that I normally stick to sealed in package uh, when I make these purchases. And, and the primary reason for that, it's not for uh, assurance of quality because, you know, um, Hasbro's quality control at the factory is sketchy, uh, to say the least. It's more of, of, of knowing precisely where the figures have been um, secure in their packages. Um, along with their complete complement of uh, accessories. Um, but in this case, I know exactly where all these loose figures came from. And it's a, it's a collection that I know is better cared for than most children on this planet. So um, when Laser Pants reached out to me and told me he was looking to move some figures from his Black Series collection, it was an easy sale because uh, it was a great deal. Most of these, again, were already on my wish list, and uh, and I know where they came from. And <laughs> he's probably already typing in the comments, yeah, I put them all up my butt. <laughs> and even so, I still know where they've been. All right, so let's do it, folks. This is, this is going to be great. Uh, this, this really gives me that feeling of, of opening uh, a gift on Christmas Day uh, when I was a little boy, even though it's, you know, the 1st of August for me. I don't know what date it'll be for you. I don't know when I'm going to upload this. Actually, it's the 3rd of August, and this guy here is super quick, uh, within two or three days at most. In fact, yeah, two days, all the way across the country. Meanwhile, I, I just received a package today that uh, was shipped 12 days ago and only had to travel 500 miles. So, you know, it's not the mail, folks. It's the mailer. Okay, let's waste no more time. I f if I knew I wouldn't get a copyright strike, I'd turn on some Star Wars music while I was doing this. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the next best thing. It's gonna be fun. All right, I don't even know where to start. There's so much in here. Nice packing as I knew it would be. And, oh yes. Look at this, sealed in individual little sandwich baggies. Oh yes. We'll start with Emperor Palpatine. There's his stick. Yeah. Look at that cloth, cloth goods. That looks great. I remember uh, uh, mailing in a bunch of proof of purchases off of uh, some Star Wars, some Return of the Jedi figures back in probably 83 in order to get a mail away uh, Emperor figure. And of course that was the three and three quarter inch scale. Oh, that looks great. I know exactly how I'm gonna pose him to. I'm gonna bend him down just a little bit, you know, and get him that sort of hunched back, it'll be great. All right. Oh, and I really appreciate these these little packages that he's put these in. All right. Now, how am I going to do this? Let me just go ahead and get the box out of the way. You've, we've all seen a box. What we haven't seen is... Let me get that tape off the uh, table. There is these figures. All right. Scoot them over just a little further. Try to get them all eventually on camera. Might not be able to succeed, folks. I think I think the number we have here is 20. So we'll do our best. All right. 
All right. Now these chappies. Yeah, I don't know much about these guys because it's from the uh, the, the new films. Uh, they look cool though. So how are we gonna do this? Okay. Now I'm. I don't know if these are all technically the same characters or not. Again, I don't know anything about these new movies. I think one of these at least is called an elite. Praetorian Guard. Praetorian is a Latin word with Roman connotations. Oh, big old glaive weapon. Seems like I recall seeing these in one particular clip on YouTube, like from one of the new films, like a lightsaber duel in slow motion with these guys. Um, the, the cinematography, it reminded me a lot of the orgy from Eyes Wide Shut. Uh, but these were the characters. <laughs> Fidelio. These are the... Uh, uh, the guards, it looks to me, that were like we're in that scene. They look really cool. Obviously, the uh, the modern evolution in the Star Wars universe of the Emperor's Royal Guards. Uh, with now some... I wonder how that works. I wonder if each one of these little plates is jointed. I bet it is. I bet it has to be. Well, cool. Okay, now, I think all three of these are technically the same figure with just a different head and a different accessory. This one's more like leather than cloth, so that's a clear difference right there. Ooh, now this will remind me of the uh, uh, sort of um, uh, Japanese martial arts right there. Um, I'll, I tell you what, from this angle, it looks like a, a medieval uh, 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 helmet, you know, from the side. So it looks like a, that was probably taken into account. We have another... Uh, Pole arm weapon in there with him. Okay. And here's the third one. Oh. I really dig these. Now, again, I, I'm sure they have... Now, that guy has a, a wicked... Um, uh, some sort of blade. I don't know if it's a force pike. Again, I have not seen the new films, and I have no intentions of ever doing so. Uh, at least willingly. And uh, But... Neat costume, neat outfit here. I really dig that. All right. Okay. Let's see. And I have to just put these out here on the table. Flip this over. Ah, yes. And speaking of... Here he is. <laughs> That's awesome. It'll look great once I get his uh, robes sorted there. It's uh, Emperor's Royal Guard from Return of the Jedi. Awesome. There's the the pokey stick or the force pike. Now, <laughs> he did tell me <laughs> that there was some burn marks on this one. No doubt done with his infamous heat gun. But I was aware of that. Yeah, this looks like a really cool figure. And of course, at this point, you will have probably seen that uh, Kirkano's figure. We'll compare it to that, I guess, when I do the review for this. Uh, but this is, uh, again, this was one of the figures that I clipped off the proof of purchase to get the Emperor back in 1983. And I always really like this figure in the 118th scale. This one has infinitely better uh, armor underneath the robes than that old uh, Kenner figure. Alright, and again, once we get him out of the package and, and, and get his robes sorted, it's going to look awesome. Okay. Next. Oh, man. Now, we've already seen uh, a First Order Snowtrooper. But now here is an elite First Order Snowtrooper. And I'm just glancing over at the one I have on an Action Force stand right now. And, if, I mean, obviously he's wearing this cloak with the hood. And that may be the only difference. But I tell you what. Yeah, look at that. He's even got him posed in there for me. That looks great. We'll just have to see if the if the ankle joints are tighter than the one uh, that I already have. Uh, that's going to look great on display. It's, there's even cloth surrounding the backpack. That looks really cool. Again, I don't have to know. I don't need. I don't need context uh, for figures like this in these uh, modernized stormtrooper getups. 
Um, I don't need to know what was going on in the new movies to appreciate uh, this action figure. As far as I'm concerned, it's just uh, the next, uh, the next iteration of stormtroopers, which is precisely what they are, I guess. All right, cool. Now. Okay, let's go ahead and grab this chappy. Now this, frankly, <laughs> I'm going to pull his hood up over his face. I'm going to go ahead and take this one out of the package. And then I'll put it back in before we're done. Oh, yes. Here we have the OG Obi-Wan Kenobi wearing cloth robe and the hood. That's great. There's his lightsaber. Oh, that's great. This one you cannot find anywhere close to retail price. This one is very expensive. I got a great deal on this one. If This one alone, folks. Um, so, th yeah, this is just a, a real treat. All right. And, uh, of course, I did possess an Obi-Wan Kenobi figure when I was a kid. I foolishly put it in our school's time capsule in 84 or 85, and presumably that's where it is today. So, <laughs> that... That error has been now corrected with a, a, a superior version from the future. All right, cool. I'm going to go ahead and put him back in this bag. It was a great specimen, too, from 80, or 77. It had uh, the vinyl cape and the, uh, the blue lightsaber that uh, you know went up in his arm the way it did with Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Okay, up next, we have, ah, I think technically the name of this figure is General Leia, blaster in hand. This looks like a, a nice figure, actually. Okay, yeah, I like that purple vest. Again, we're going to do reviews of all these. Folks, this is going to give me content for the next well into the fall and uh, so stay tuned for reviews of all these figures in future all right next ah here he is now, i think technically the name of this figure is the first order executioner it's clearly a first order stormtrooper with some different paint applications and it looks like a some sort of Star Wars version of, of tactical webbing there. Loaded with accessories. All right. That looks nice. I like that stripe going along the side. Neat paint apps on the uh, figure. Well, listen, I'll review these later. Uh, but no, I, I really dig this. That's cool. Okay. Now, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm not done. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, sweet. Here's another one I was never going to find at a reasonable price. But by way of this lot, it was perfectly reasonable. It's OG Luke Skywalker with a, a nice cloth uh, tunic. Lightsaber's in there. He's got a blaster weapon. I think that's the blaster he was using on the Death Star. Probably took it away from a stormtrooper. So that, that does look like a stormtrooper's uh, weapon. Oh yeah, that's right. They uh, they uh, dressed up as stormtroopers. So that makes perfect sense. Neat belt. Yeah, that's very cool. So this is like the one, two, third, perhaps four. No, there's another one in here. There's at least this will be the you know four Luke Skywalkers in my collection at least. All right, and of course this is based off one of the very earliest. Star Wars figures from episode 4. Except instead of a yellow lightsaber up his arm, he's got the proper blue lightsaber. Alright. Now. Who's this? Oh, yeah, right. Here is Luke Skywalker in his Bespin Fatigues. This was another favorite figure among fans in the, the 1980s. This is uh, you know, what he wore in his duel with Darth Vader in Cloud City. This is the blaster, the lightsaber, nice weathering on the, uh, on the fatigues. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I will display this one right alongside Darth Vader on my Action Force stands. Cool. And I guarantee that hand pops right out. Of course, they would on these figures anyway, but uh, that's probably one of the big gimmicks with the figure. Okay. Let's go ahead and start putting these up here so we keep them all on the frame on display here. Good. Oh, man. Okay, now, I think this is the very first, uh, technically prequel character in my collection. Won't be the last, but, in fact, it's, technically this isn't even a prequel. This is probably from Star Wars Rebel. This is Ahsoka Tano, um, very popular character in the, uh, Clone Wars CGI series. And she, I think she was, made an appearance in the, in the Mandalorian, and she was on this uh, cartoon Rebels. And, uh, what, what is she? A Tortugan, is that correct? Not a Twi'lek, but I think she's a Tortugan, if I'm not mistaken. She comes with two lightsabers that, um, they're not, they're not blue, they're, they're, they're white. The, the blades are, are white. And that, that pretty much, it's clear, they've made them clear. That's, that's a good compromise, I guess. This looks great. This looks great. Neat designs on this figure. I wonder if she'll stand up without this, a stand. We'll find that out when we do the uh, the review. Excellent. Now, here we go. Here is one. That... This is probably the most difficult figure to find. And this is going to surprise you once you see it. Just an Imperial Stormtrooper. But, man, these are difficult to find. Terribly difficult. I guess because so many people buy... 10 to 20 to 30 of them and, and make, make their little displays standing in attention, you know, in, in blocks, parade formations. Hey, that's not a bad accessory. That's not a bad weapon that comes with him. Look at that. So, uh, I don't, you know, they've made several of these. I, I don't know technically which one this is. Uh, this could be from The Mandalorian. This could be from... Uh, the 50th or the 40th anniversary collection. This could be one of the very early figures. I don't know. Doesn't matter to me. I just wanted a stormtrooper in the collection, and this this looks like a great example of one. So finally, I've got an actual Imperial stormtrooper to put alongside all these first order troopers. That's great. All right. He's got a holster for his E11 right there. Oh, this will be this will be fun to play with. I think. Now, this. Again, here's another one that's terribly difficult to find. Make sure I get this right. I think this is Commander Pyre. Uh, not to be confused with Captain Phasma, who's silver. Uh, obviously based off the, the First Order Trooper. He has that the shoulder insignia that... that The p entire purpose of that is to show rank. And I believe the name is Commander Pyre. Oh, that looks great with that gold paint job on the armor. That looks great. There's there's another one that's in red armor, whose name eludes me at the moment. Uh, Crimson. Captain Crimson, I believe the name of that one is. That one's also on my uh, wish list. But this one is, is fantastic. Yeah. So that's really going to pop in the collection. Because, it, well, I was about to say there's there are no other gold figures in Star Wars. Yes, there are. And uh, we'll <laughs> let's just keep watching. Okay, now I don't know what's in this. Because it's... It's wrapped up. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to take him out of the package, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I knew all about this. Here he is. Luke Skywalker from uh, the, the new films. And here's his cloak. And this cloak is very difficult to get on him. I already knew that. Just from reading reviews and, and watching other videos. The cloak is included. I don't think this Luke even came with a lightsaber. Uh, because I, I think there's a, a good reason for that story-wise. I, uh, I think Luke Skywalker, at this impotent stage in his, in his life, is no longer technically a Jedi or something like that. Um, again, I don't like what I've heard about the new films. So I, I'm not interested, really. Uh, but hey, this figure looks great. Of course, he would have the robot hand there. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
And you know what? That looks more like Mark Hamill today than any other Luke Skywalker figure looks like Mark Hamill in this series. So, hey, you know, props where it's due. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put him back in the uh, packaging here. I really appreciate the uh, these uh, sandwich bags or whatever they are. I guess these are specifically for action figures. I'm going to hold on to these. These, will, these could prove useful in the future. All right. And I'll probably have to sit down and figure out how to get that cape around him. Because I remember reading a review on a specific website I go to. It's sort of a checklist of the entire series that you can... Uh, it's sorted by different uh, criteria, uh, uh, movie or year they were produced or uh, wave of figures and so on and so forth. Hey! Uh, and yeah, speaking of gold figure, I'm going to take him out of the package for just a moment as well. And folks, this is another one that is absolutely impossible to find uh, at a reasonable price. It's a C-3PO, and uh, this happens to be the one from the last film. Um, it has this gimmick where you put him in the freezer or something, and his eyes turn red, and there's a reason for that from the film. Um, but you know what? He, this looks just like C-3PO from Episode Four, except I think maybe one of the legs is supposed to be silver or something. I don't care about that. My C-3PO from the late 70s didn't have a silver leg, so... This is perfectly fine. Yeah, that's great. Oh, that's some good articulation on this thing, too. I didn't know what was going on here, but now I see. That's cool. you got to be careful with that, though. Um, and for some reason, this particular 3PO comes with Chewbacca's accessories. So now at this point, if I can find a loose, incomplete Chewbacca, I've got his uh, bowcaster and his uh, bandolier. So, uh, you know, there was some forward thinking going on there, but... Uh, that is a neat uh, C-3PO figure, I think. Yeah, that's really cool. Nice, nice ab crunch. Nice uh, movement there at the waist. Okay, again, we'll review these figures uh, throughout the rest of the summer and into the fall. All right. And... Oh! Not done, folks. There's more. Let's just go ahead and take the box off the uh, table, huh? Up next. Oh, she's beautiful. Here's the OG Princess Leia from Episode 4. And, of course, I had this figure in 3 and 3 quarter inch scale as a little boy. Uh, she's got a hood. She's got... Oh, there's the Stormtrooper Blaster, the E-11, I think it's called. And she's also got that uh, Sporting Blaster she takes a Stormtrooper out with at the at the very beginning of, of Episode 4. Nice belt. Oh. Okay. That's great. What a great little figure. And of course, uh, we I, I just got a Leia and Hoth outfit. Uh, and uh, we have General Leia. So, you know, good representation of Leia's. There's quite a few Leia's in the collection. I think the very first one is... It is not highly desirable because they were still trying to figure out how to produce toys at that point, apparently. The, 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 you can't call it a slave Leia anymore. Uh, the, uh, the Battle of Dune Sea Leia, uh, as I recall, it's, 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 it's not a great figure. And they'll never produce that one again. Um, but no, that look, looks great. Nice, nice little makeup on the face. If Again, after reviewing that Lady J, that's... I suppose that does make a difference. That's great. Okay. Again, uh, a lot of these you can't find at a reasonable price. So this was a great deal, folks. All right. And looks like we have three more in here. Yeah. Okay, I don't know who to start with. Um, now that is actually a really cool figure. Here's Han Solo, as he appeared in, uh, I think, The Force Awakens. Um, you know, immediately, at, from a distance, this could easily be an Indiana Jones figure. 
I mean, you know, put a fedora hat on that and give him a whip. But man, that's a pretty nice figure. That's a that looks exactly like Harrison Ford today. So bravo. There's this. Is that a DL44? I don't know. I think it is. In that uh, holster. Yeah, that is a DL44, I believe. Oh, that's a cool figure. So realistically, now all I gotta pick up is an R2D2 and a Chewbacca. And I'll have the core cast of Star Wars. I've already got a Lando Calrissian. Um, yeah, that's that's really it. Alright. Now there's two more. Let's look at this one. Well, oh, that, that actually does look really cool. This is a, uh, um, crap, I can't remember his name now. This is how, that's how out of sync I am with modern time. Uh, Ren, uh, not Revan, uh, Kylo Ren, that's his name. And this is the version where you, he's, he's got his mask on, which I feel like is the better version of the figure. Uh, comes with his, his, uh, his broadsword saber, or whatever you're supposed to call it. Uh, but no, that looks all right. I actually kind of dig the ribbing there on the arms. I don't know if that's taped up or what it is. Um, oh, he's got some cloth on him as well. Okay. Well, this one would be fun to play with, I think. Um, okay, and now, I, now... This isn't really the best for last year. I mean, I, I love all these. But one of the most challenging figures to find, even at an expensive price, is Boba Fett. Now, you know, there's some stuff on pre-order coming out that I'm not particularly interested in from the uh, Book of Boba Fett. Uh, but otherwise, the uh, Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, very pricey. Well, now here we have the prototype uh, Boba Fett. And I think I know the story behind this. I think this figure is based off very early concept art of Boba Fett uh, prior to, uh, uh, well, certainly prior to The Empire Strikes Back, but also prior to the Star Wars Holiday Special, uh, in which his design was more or less locked in, uh, in that cartoon in the middle of that uh, Holiday Special. But this, I think, is based off very early sketches, very early concept art, in which this was probably more akin to an advanced uh, rank of Stormtrooper. But there he is. And, of course, I have the uh, Death Watch Mandalorian now. And, and so here's another Mandalorian in the collection. Ah, that's, that's it's cool. I have to admit it's cool. And, it, you know, in my head canon, in my role play, uh, this is going to be uh, exactly what I just uh, suggested. Uh, another form of Imperial uh, Elite Trooper. There's a cloth cape on it. That's cool. There's the Boba Fett weapon. We'll have to see how that compares with the Death Watch Mandalorian blaster. So he's got a pistol. Of course, the rocket pack. Wookie cords on the side. All right, that's all there. Well, now this is this is great. Again, this 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 is one that goes for quite a bit, even on the aftermarket. So uh, I think that looks really cool. Well, there it is, folks. So my collection of Star Wars Black Series figures has more than doubled, thanks to one incredible deal so uh you know ryan if you're watching thank you so much and uh you know several of the figures on the table here i would have never found playing my little game of uh can you can you purchase this below retail price so this is absolutely tremendous uh, now i have uh, several figures from uh, the original trilogy and uh, some more figures from uh, uh, the the sequels, and uh, and uh, with Ahsoka and uh, the uh, uh, the Phase One Clone Trooper that's uh, hopefully on the way. Uh, that'll be two figures from the uh, uh, the prequels in the collection. And you know, I don't have anything against the prequels. I mean, they're not great films, but uh, they are part of of who we are, Generation X. Um, it's just that the, uh, the prequel figures in this series are, aren't really readily available below retail price, folks. Um, don't know why. Uh, the clone troopers, uh, are usually quite expensive, uh, unless you can, uh, uh, purchase them right when they come out before the scalpers buy them all and, and jack the prices on eBay. 
And so, viewers, if you like this sort of content on my channel, definitely check out the uh, 3POA podcast channel. It's more of this, just done much, much, much better. With an infinitely higher uh, production value. So, I think what I'll do is take the uh, camera here off the tripod, and we'll just have uh, one last look at all these. And uh, I'll take us out with some music. How does that sound? And uh, let me just get the tripod out of the way here. Well, thanks so much for watching, pals. Ryan, thanks again. This is incredible. So, there you go, folks. Star Wars Black Series figures. May the force be with you. Oh,